previously on Harrow. I want to see if I can postpone the cremation of some remains. I just got a visit from your friend, Soroya Das. Is Robert dead? Beg your pardon? How much did you dislike Robert Quinn? I didn't dislike him. I hated him. I know you want a place of our own. My stepmom said it's ours if we want it. We'll go. Quinn's phone went black on October 3rd. I want to search that bushland and trawl that dam. Six recruits and a supervisor. One day. You're off the case. Are you kidding me? You should be thanking me for not suspending you. I authorised six recruits. Now I have to pay the 16. Slip of the pen. Well, CIB's baby now. Do you believe that those river bones and that concrete are Robert Quinn? I do. Yeah, I think Harrow does too. He stopped the bones from being cremated. OK, I'll ask you. What do we do about Harrow? What do you mean? If he means, I don't think we can tell Harrow about this. Oh, that's not fair. It's a conflict of interest. He was married to Quinn's wife. I just need Harrow to focus on his work. And if he finds out that those bones could have been Steph's husband, then... Oh, we, we get it, we get it. I mean, Harrow still has feelings for Steph and now become personal. What? Oh, you and Harrow. It's nobody's business. It's mine now. You're definitely off this case. I can't afford to have you distracted either. Brian, Maxine. Nick. If uh, those river bones require some more work, can you deal with Fairley? Yeah. Falsified a request form. Good find, though. Brian? Yeah, just don't tell your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Das, sins of crime, leave me a message. What was the X you left me this morning? What did it mean? Was it X rated? I'd have thought I was at least a double X, maybe even a triple. Let me know you're okay. Did I miss the coup?
That says to Professor Maxine Pavich. Are you stealing both their identities? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, this was in my pigeonhole. I really don't want to think about your pigeonhole. Do you know who called Maxine this morning? Uh, Captain Rhetorical from the SS Don't Answer. Professor Lucian Gotti from the Geneva Institute of Science and Medicine. Well, Pavich isn't here. How do you know? Lucian Gotti was impressed by my paper on pathophysiology of shock. Oh, come on, Harrow. Put it together. Gotti likes my paper, he tries to Skype my boss, and then I find this in my hole. I think that was a mistake. Oh, no. No, no, no. You know what it is? I'm being head-jobbed. Head-hunted, I think you mean. Whatever. The Geneva Institute of Science and Medicine wants me. Hey. Personal mail, personal Skypes. You're crossing the line, Lyle. It's this coming from you. It's not your business. Oh, you're jealous. Oh, look, it's my two favourite people. Well, not favourite people, but... What is it? Motor vehicle accident. Middle-aged woman, adult son. Enjoy. No, 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 no. No, I've got plenty to do. Yes, but if you do these, I'll have nothing to do, so... I am not doing these. Yes, you are. You two can work together. I want to see if it's possible. Why There's can't you do no way I said... Work to get them. What is that? Oh, this was Mr. Libert. Mind your own business, Daniel. Get those two to the viewing room. There's a relative who wants to ID them. Why can't you do it? I have an international call. You look very handsome this morning. What the hell is wrong with you? Nobody seems to want to talk to me today, so I'm trying to generate some good karma. <laughs> that horse is so bolted. Hello, I'm Daniel, and this is Simon. Please come in. I'm Tiff Swale, and this is uh, Audrey Matheson. There is uh, no easy way to do this, Audrey. You okay? Do you want to go? Can I stay with her for a bit? Yes, of course. It's going to break a lot of hearts. Old car, was it? No airbags? Kerry was driving. She always drove a boy to work. Glenn was... he was learning impaired. Couldn't drive. Local farmer came across the wreck this morning. Will you excuse me? People want to know what's going on. If you don't like women leaving before you wake up, you shouldn't live on a boat. Where are you? Half an hour out of town on an MBA. Yeah, it's a bit straightforward for you, isn't it? Double fatality. Female 60s, male 30s. Ah, you've got them. Yes, the daughter just ID'd them. Coming in for the autopsies? Oh, swoon. No, I'm going to um, stay and check this vehicle in. OK. I just need coffee. Hmm? Talk to you soon. Bye. Excited, I am thrilled, I am jubilant, and I'm not a jubilant. I'm excited. 
Hi, Steph. Brian. Hi. Got a minute? Yeah, come in. Thanks. Good news, bad news. Good news, tickets. Bad news, doesn't leave till after five. Stay here and look after the stuff. Where are you going? Be back soon. But why do I have to be in here? So we can share Simon. I don't like arguing over the deceased. Why can't I do mine in my room and you do yours in so here? So we can share Simon. There is so much therapy being born in here right I'm now. I'm going to see Maxine. She wants us to work together. Well, what's the point if I'm leaving? You'd really leave. God, yes. Wouldn't you? All right, fine. But I get first CAT scan. No, what? no. I'll be Switzerland. Ah. Geneva. Heads. Oh. <laughs> Anterior visual, impact trauma, visible on right cheek and right mandible, consistent with car. So she was looking left when she hit the tree. Broken skin and torn musculature over right clavicle and above this right. left wrist. arm here, the scratches, and this finger looks to me to be broken. Do you think you were trying to prise her hand away from her wheel? No, frontal lobe blockage can result in involuntary muscle contraction. Oh, so you're thinking stroke? I'm not thinking. I'm observing. You'd really leave? Why not? I mean, you resigned not so long ago. That was for Fern. So why did you change your mind? Well, that was for Fern, too. How does your coming back help Fern? Maybe it doesn't. I'm a screw-up. That's why I leave such a path of destruction. Well, you're down to your last ginger snap. Harry not paying child support. Fern's 18 now, so he doesn't need to. And yet, he still does. So, why are you here? What have you found? Did he insure this? You know, he never seemed to have money for anything else, but he always took care of that car. It was his baby. In the last 10 months, has there been a claim made against it? Not that I'm aware of. Thanks for your time, Steph. Um, we've decided Harrow doesn't need to be distracted by this. What are you saying? I'm saying don't tell him. I'm not starting well, at the head. Don't you start at the head. I never you start at the head. That I said that the she talk. suffered a stroke. I start in the so thoracic. So why don't you start have, looking for I a cerebral hemorrhage? Boss. It says, I found something on the sun's CT scan. That is a bullet. Is that what killed him? The entry room would have been right about here. And that is old scar tissue. So that bullet's been in there a long time. You think I'll be needing me lucky pants tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, play your cards, right? Oh, you're disgusting. Huh? What do you think? I think you look like an idiot. Well, if I'm an idiot, and you're marrying an idiot, then logically that makes you the idiot. Oh, well, you're really revealing how you think about me on the day of our wedding, aren't you? Well, it's better to find out before it's too late. It's too late. Do 
still love him? I guess a part of me still does, yes. They found his car in a dam. They don't know whether he put it there or someone else. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be telling you Was this. he in it? Oh. Some people think he might be dead. Your dad doesn't. I mean, I'm sure he wishes he was, but I'm sorry. You shouldn't have to worry about any of... Okay. Hey, yeah, sorry. What's going on, Fish? Where are you? Uh, just, just wait there. I'll be there as soon as I can. That's what killed him. Mm -hmm. But? There. An entry point. Just below the ear, travelling forward. Suicide attempt. With a handgun, it's unlikely. And with a rifle, it's impossible. He couldn't have shot himself. Well, maybe it was an accident. He dropped a gun, discharged. <sighs> maybe, but again, how did he not know? No. Kerry, Glenn, Audrey, none of them owned a gun. But you already checked the licensing register, didn't you? Yeah. So what are you thinking? That a country sergeant just turns a blind eye to someone owning an unregistered weapon? I was just being thorough. And you? Oh, I just like watching her be thorough. Well, look down there. The word's got around about Kerry and Glenn. It's already a little memorial service underway. They're inseparable. So who shot him? It's hard to believe anyone would have. The whole town loved them both. Except for him. Oh, Royce. What do you think that's about? Town drunk, who knows? Maybe he didn't know the Mathesons. Maybe he didn't like them. Everything okay? Royce? Well, you used to have my job. I guess we're all susceptible, huh? Don't mind him. Can we speak to the daughter? We're sorry to intrude. Do you have a minute? That's ridiculous. Glenn was shot in the head. I is this for real? Who by? That's what we'd like to know. And wouldn't that have killed him? Normally, yes, but the projectile missed all the major blood vessels and brain centers. It's unusual when it happens. But if the crash killed him, when was he shot? Years ago, maybe decades. He would have been bleeding quite heavily from the scalp. Do you ever remember him coming home bleeding? When he was 13, he was climbing the old windmill. One of the bolts had rusted through. He fell and hit his head. I was jealous because Mum kept him home from school for three weeks, but you're saying he was shot. Audrey, did Glenn have any enemies? Ex-girlfriends, boyfriends, people he owed money to? Did he have arguments? Glenn wasn't interested in girls or boys. Glenn was simple. He was simple before the fall, and he certainly wasn't sharper after. But he was happy. He loved dogs. He loved cake, and he adored Mum. They were inseparable. No one would have wanted to shoot him. It's quite sad that you miss him so much. This is why I don't have a dog. I'm calling about Carrie Matheson. Is that your ute down the front? Did you ever drive Glenn around? No. 
Mum insisted on doing that. I guess it made her feel like she was protecting Glenn. Listen, I don't know what else to tell you. Do you know why she died yet? Was it a stroke? No, no stroke. Did you know that your mother had advanced breast cancer? It had metastasized into her lungs and liver. One more question. I'm, I'm so sorry. Your mother had something else in her lungs. Spores. Plant spores. Her orchids. Apart from Glenn, they're what she loved most. Thank you, Audrey. So, Kerry Matheson didn't have a stroke, but she did have terminal cancer. Hmm, a mentally impaired son who probably would have been lost without her. Do you think she hit that tree on purpose? Murder suicide? Maybe. Orchids. Apart from Glenn, that's the thing she loved most. Do you think Audrey was jealous of her brother? Not enough to shoot him in the head. If she did shoot him and didn't kill him, why didn't she finish the job? Hello. Robert Quinn's car has come up. What? The cops found his car. How do you know? I'm staring at it. I see. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know. Everything OK? Yeah. Quinn's fine. So, am I walking home? Well, that's up to you. Why don't you tell me you'd found Quinn's car? I'm so sorry. I did not want to keep that from you. Who told you? Not Pavage. Nichols. Oh, you went to see Steph. Of course she'd tell you. So everyone knew but me. Why? Everyone thought that if you heard about the car, you'd make it your mission. Everyone thinks you're loyal to Steph. So, uh, what's everyone thinking? Well, either Quinn put the car in the dam himself or someone put it in there for him. You found the car? Yeah. And that's why I'm off the case, because I overstepped the mark. You found the car? Yeah. Good evening. You haven't changed a bit, have you, Louisa? Jeez, except for that dodgy haircut, you lose a bit, mate. Oh, so nice to see you, Brian. Yeah. So what's this, eh? Shakedown? Oh, I don't do shakedowns, Luke. No. Hey, I heard about that little episode you had. I would keep very fucking quiet about that if I were you. So if this is not a shakedown, what is it? Robert Quinn. Who had it in for him? You got a phone book? <laughs> Why? Uh, is he dead? Shit. 
Who owed him the most? Quinn was shit at picking winners, but he wasn't a fool. I mean, he owed a lot of people, but as far as I know, he never owed one person more than I don't know, a couple of grand. Uh, never enough to break an arm or let alone top him. Besides, dead men don't pay. So you're telling me you never ripped big bucks off anyone? Well, there was this one person there. Yeah. Freezing. Did I wake you? Well, me and my hot water bottle, so yeah. What are you looking for? I just remembered that I have something that belonged to my husband. Should I go home? You know I was married. You know I was married? Me twice. Okay, then you win on that one. My second husband. The cop. He really. He hurt me. People, I don't think people understand how much. Well, I want to know if you want to tell me. Sometime. But he's gone, right? So then everything's going to be okay. I'm sorry. I missed the bus. 120 bucks. We'll get another one tomorrow. What about tonight? We'll get a room. We'll run out of money. We only need enough for another ticket. Where'd you go? Where's your sister? She's down visiting Mum. Nephew? Son. Peter. Where is he? In Melbourne. With his father. Aneurysm. Like a bullet in the brain. Sorry. Light. Phone calls. She told me about Quinn's car. Nichols told me not to tell you. And you didn't. How does knowing about Rob's car help you? What can you do? What do you think they're gonna do? The police. They'll just keep going. They won't stop now until they know whether Robert is alive or dead. 
And if he's dead, it won't stop until someone's charged. What should I do? How do you feel about it? I'm glad they found it. Is Fern okay? I hardly know her anymore, so... Dan, I've got to go. Right over. <coughs> Saw you yesterday with our lovely senior sergeant. You and your pretty friend. Picked her as forensic. Not sure about you. Morg. Pathologist. You're a long way from home. This is that Holly, isn't it? And this is you. You were the sergeant here when Holly went missing. Why didn't you go into the church for Glenn and Carrie yesterday? Everyone loved them. Except you. I found a bullet in Glenn's brain. It had been there a long time. You know who might have shot him? Like you say, everyone loved them. Like I say, except you. I was the cop here, when Glenn was a kid. Around that time, there was a string of animals found dead. Mutilated. Cats, sheep, stray dogs. Did you catch anyone? No. But it all stopped after Glenn Matheson hit his head at the farm. The thing is, two weeks ago, I was in behind the showground. And I found bones, dog bones, burned. Another stray got doused with petrol. Just like 20 years ago. What's that got to do with Holly Ostwald? What happened to her? I don't know. The person to ask would be her best friend. I want to know about Holly Ostwald. Holly was a friend at school. And one day she vanished. Why? Do you know what happened to her? No. Did your mother know, or Glenn? What happened to your neck? I'm calling the police.
guess we're both getting pretty good at sneaking out. I didn't want to wake you. Wake me? Now, I got your message. Audrey Matheson did report a minor accident in her utility five weeks ago. What's this about? Look at this. It was 20 years ago. Exactly. Now, look at this. Here is where we found the bullet, and this... Scar tissue, the route the bullet travelled. Old scar tissue. 20 years old? And what's that? That's scar tissue too, isn't it? Yes. Recent scar tissue, about a month or two old. So, the bullet moved a month or two ago, and... Audrey had a minor bingle in her ute five weeks ago. So, the bullet shifted and didn't kill him? No. The bullet is in his frontal lobe, the part of the brain that affects personality. I think when that bullet shifted about a month or two ago, Glenn's personality changed. Changed how? Changed back. Don't let Philly see you working on one of his patients. Oh, I'm not. You are. Her lungs are over there. I need to know more about those spores. Can't help you. You can. I looked up Greg Matheson's records. You arrested him, age 12, for animal cruelty. You never charged him. Kerry covered for him. I looked up your records, too. You're in charge of the weapons buyback. You let Kerry Matheson keep her 22 when she should have got a license for it. Why? Why does any idiot break the rules for a woman? I loved her. I let her keep it on one condition. That she use it. And there was no accident at the farm, was there? Glenn didn't hit his head. His mother shot him because of the animals and because of Holly. Where is Holly? The only person who knew for sure was shot in the head and his memory went with it. Yes, I can see you, Yellow Lee. Oh, yeah. well, technology. Now, listen, your, your Dina pulled about those spores. Congratulations, that is, that's quite a rare find. Uh, speaking of which, hello there, Sergeant Daz. Uh, the spores? Oh, yes. Uh, Stropheria orentiaca, scarlet round head. It's a New Zealand mushroom that's not common here at all. Well, how would Kerry Matheson have them? Oh, well, I, 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 I suppose spores could travel with other rare plants. The lilies, ferns, orchids. All right, send me an invoice. Not here. Car's gone. I'm going to go into town, see if I can find the sergeant. You wait here. See if she comes back. Daniel, let's wait here, OK?
Did you know she was here? Mum always said, don't go in the orchid house. It was her private space, and now I know why. And I knew about Glenn. From when we were little. From when I came home from school and found my dead mouse. After that, Mum never left me alone with him. But he would still get out and do bad things. Mum tried to get help for him. I, I guess she hoped he'd just stop, but he didn't stop. He kept going. And then he saw Holly. I knew when Holly went missing that it was Glenn. But I never knew he killed her on the property. I found Mum one night in the kitchen. She looked so tired. She told me, no matter what I heard, to stay in bed. I didn't know what she was going to do until... The next morning... Everything changed. Glenn changed. The devil became the angel. I guess Mum figured, what was the point in having him arrested? She tried to kill him, and in return got this simple, beautiful boy. What was the point in telling anyone? Holly's family. We said he hit his head. And everyone fell in love with the new Glenn. Even Mum. But she never left me alone with him again. Until... Her car broke down a couple of months ago. I offered to pick Glenn up from... from the bakery and I... I had an accident. And then he changed. And this? That's when Mum knew she had to finish what she started 20 years ago. I knew about the cancer. I think that made it easier. She sacrificed herself because she loved her child. I guess there's something laudable in that. She also had a murder. Yeah, well, that is unforgivable. Nevertheless, it's fascinating. Frontal lobe injury resulting in dramatic changes to social behavior, IQ, sexual interests, but then, then a second change? You should write a paper. Publish? No, I think I'll leave publishing for those who want to work in Geneva. What are you gonna tell me? When it concerns you. So you don't think it does? No, it's not your business. Daniel, and believe it or not, not every decision is made for the greater good. And when were you going to tell me about Quinn's car? Keeping that for me was for the greater good? Yes. 
Don't you trust me? Of course I trust you. But what good does knowing do for you? What if Quinn is dead? What if the bones you've been banging on about are Quinn's? He was a bad egg, and we all warned Steph about him. Look, it is what it is. And if Quinn is dead, then you know that Brian will find the killer. You just need to sit tight and keep doing your work. Seriously? I can't go yet. Why? I have found some things I need to find out. What? What? Don't tell me. You can't tell me. Cal, I'm so sorry. Fish. You know I love you. But you still can't tell me what's going on. Hi. All right. Bloody shame Quinn's parents are dead. We'd have the DNA sorted and we'd know for sure. You're on the case? Now his car's up. To you and Das, eh? You bloody terriers. I thought I wasn't supposed to know. Oh, yeah. Nah. Well, Maxine said you worked it out. Hey, listen, tell me, how much do you think his wedding band was worth? I don't know. We have to ask Steph. Man's wedding band. I'd say no more than a grand. Yeah, agreed. Hardly worth the trouble of cutting it off. You know, that might not be Quinn. Hmm. Well, we're diving again. If we find that skull, it will be a done deal. Oh, I'd best away. <laughs> Good work on keeping these. We're gonna nail this one. Nichols. Hey, Brian. Oh, g'day, Nick. You found his phone, eh? Hey? Yeah, and got a warrant for his voicemails. Now, we found a message on Quinn's phone October the 2nd, which is the day before his car went into the dam. It's from Steph Tolson. Hi, this is Rob. Sorry I can't talk. Leave a message and I promise I'll call you back. Fucking asshole. That's it. I warned you. Now when I find you, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Now you went and saw Steph. Did 
she say or do anything to make you think she was involved in Quinn's disappearance? The divers found a skull. It's Quinn's. Reese, we are member of the rowing squad. Unfortunately, Reese lost the single skulls event. Not quite the tight crew I expected. You're still angry about Reese losing that race? Yeah, I am. We're asking all the boys that were with Reese the night he died to provide a saliva swab for DNA testing. <laughs>